Hey guys, how are you? Thank you all very much for coming along. I uh, just want to make sure we get some sound checks and everything going. Um, we've got Johnny, his co-host, MGV, uh, Anch, and then uh, we've got Charlie, Yarrow, and um, that's really it. So, yeah, look, thanks very much, everyone, for coming around. It's it's a good thing to chat about. We've um, we put our heads together and we, we want to kind of keep it on rails a little bit, but keep it kind of loose as well. So we don't want to be too structured like robots by any means. But, um, yeah, look, we'll, we've got a bit of a, a um, an agenda, which we'll do an intro. And then we've got three questions that we're going to ask. So we're going to ask what the, the worst experience was with mental health, uh, the best experience, and then the funniest experience within the space. So, you know, we kind of go through the, the whole process of, um, you know, you go through the darker end and then you start to work your way back out um, as you kind of do go through with mental health and that sort of thing, which, um, yeah, I've certainly been susceptible to in the past. So we've got a great crew of people here. Um, we're going to do that round the table session. So we'll do it in a couple of little runs just so we're not boring people with a, our own voices. But, yeah, it's, it's all just about um, working out what has affected us in the past to be able to put us, us here today to be able to try and help people in the future. So with that being said, I will um, happily throw around the room. And um, MGV, if you'd like to just do a, a bit of an intro, don't have to share too much, mate, but just um, yeah, generally who you are, what you're about, and why you sort of wanted to be here. Sure, man. Thank you so much for having me mindset. I think it's a, it's a great initiative. It's something that it's not very commonly talked about, and it's very underestimated. Uh, well. This is NGV Capital. Uh, I'm a 23 year old mechanical engineering student from Venezuela, but I've been in the States for two years now. And I got my first contact with crypto back in 2016. And, and some friends of mine showed me Ethereum at four, uh, at four bucks. And of course, I didn't buy any. But I did ape around 40 bucks and got the chance to cash some profits. Some, some profits. And I learned a bit about technical analysis and fundamentals back then, but nothing major. And after that, I pretty much focused in school and before getting lean before getting actively involved in the markets. And trading has been my main source of income for two years since I'm, finished, since I'm finishing college this summer. And I couldn't be more thankful for all of the growth and experiences it, it has given me. Uh, so I hope you guys stay and listen to the stories we will be sharing today. I think it's going to be great and it could be a little bit fun. So thanks for having me, Mindset. No, it's cool, mate. Yeah, look, thanks so much for, for joining us as well. It's, it's really good to have um, you around. I've seen you lots on Twitter. So yeah, look, thank you very much for that. Um, Jono, I'll throw it to you, mate, if you want to jump in. Sure thing. Uh, thanks for hosting this mindset. So uh, my name is Johnny. I've been around crypto since 2015. Uh, unfortunately, at the beginning, I didn't really uh, buy enough of it, but I did get a little bit. I got really into it in 2017. Uh, did pretty well in the ICO era. Um, cashed out some good profits. I got involved in some projects in 2018, um, and then as the bear market got deeper and deeper, uh, didn't really get any traction, lost all the funding, that sort of thing. Kept my toe in the water. Um, you know, I have a couple of companies that I own, like real storefront companies. I've invested in a, in a couple of others, and I still do some work in the traditional VC world. So I was really concentrating on that. Uh, then the 2020 crash came and I thought, you know, screw it. Let me put some of my fiat money into Bitcoin. You know, I'm not going to cash out in the next five to 10 years. And, you know, I think it's going to bounce back. And then we got shut down for the two weeks to flatten the curve, right? Which, which uh, turned into months and months. And, uh, you know, I thought I've always wanted to learn how to trade properly and really go through this process. And this is probably the only chance I'm ever going to have. And, you know, like, just like uh, MGV, just super thankful for the opportunities it's given me. And, uh, you know, it's not just the financial cushion that, it, that it's given me, but also the, the opportunity to learn and grow something completely new. So it, it's been a, a journey that I, that I look forward to continuing. Yeah, nice, man. That, that's awesome as well. Um, yeah, so from my end, um, I'll just jump in with my, my quick intro. Uh, yeah, look, I've done a similar sort of thing, was kicking around into the 2018 sort of mania, the ICO phase, which was a bit psycho back in the day. And, you know, I fell in, in love, I guess, with uh, the whole allure and, and shininess of what crypto was back then. And that was, it was actually 2017. because so I remember going into 2018 and then uh, obviously everything crashed. So, yeah, that was um, a bit of fun there. And that was what really taught me um, how I wanted to trade. And, yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of like when you put your hand up and um, you realise that gains can be won, gains can be lost. But... Uh, yeah, you, know, you certainly see a lot of people along the way that can get affected by that. And 
that's really what this did come down to as well was just to to speak about that because we've just had a um a series of that you know with the previous bull market but you know it's it's um, always good to chat about um we've got charlie's up next i'm just getting a speaker invite sorted so bear with us as well this is the very first spaces we've held i think johnny and i did a a quick 10 minute catch up or maybe a week ago just to see what this sort of looked like but just trying to get um charlie and then Yara as well sorted as speakers so just bear with us I won't be too long. Just sending the invites to them. So yeah, if um if Charlie, if you're available, mate, and you wanted to go for it, the floor is yours. Hey guys, how's it going? So uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a boomer. So technology issues on my end. <laughs> you and me both, mate. It's all good. Yeah, can you hear me? Um, yep, yeah, we got you. Yeah, it's all good. Happy days. Um, so yeah, I'm um, Charlie. I trade Bitcoin, uh, altcoins, NFTs. I've been in the space since 2017 for the ups and downs. So yeah, yeah, nice one. Um, yeah, it's a bit hectic, here, wasn't it back then? You kind of you get in, you see it all grow, but then I guess that's what we all develop as and and try and grow from there um, to get the gains. But yeah, um, sorry guys, I'm just trying to get the arrow as well, so I might. Um, just quickly invite you to speak, Yara, in case we're sending it to some other fella. Insert the meme where someone's getting woken up super early or super late. Uh, invite to speak. There you go, Yara. That should help you out there, mate, I think. In the meantime, though, um, Arch, mate, if you wanted to take the floor for a bit of an intro, then it's all yours. Cool. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. It's really cool to uh, have this talk. So, yeah, in... 2017 some friends of mine introduced me to crypto and obviously i bought like a ripple at three cents um in ethereum was also very low but i constantly switched sold and bought and then basically fomoed into all coins and then eventually didn't make any profit so at the end i was like okay i'm not gonna go into crypto ever again and then last year obviously the mega bull run came Everyone got fucking rich as, except for me. So, yeah, I I got in again. And then the May crash happened and I was like totally fucked. Like I made like two times my initial investment and then lost 70%, I think. So, yeah, that was harsh. So that's basically how I got into crypto. And then, yeah, I, I really wanted to become someone who can make it back again like a te with technical analysis with price action so that that was my main motivation yeah it's um it's definitely the best medicine isn't it when you've, you've lost thousands and yeah. a shitload and you see everyone else just ripping it you know thousand plus gains you know where are you at you know have fun staying poor and huh, you just kind of sit there going fuck what's going on yeah that's really harsh <laughs> All good, mate. Well, yeah, we're still trying to get Yarrow on. I don't know what's going on, but we'll try and work that in the background. But um, look, we'll kick into the question. So um, however cheesy these, these these kind of seem or feel or whatever you, you kind of want to call them, it's just a good way to, to get the floor open to ask these these kind of things to then ultimately give some uh, the floor or some questions to, to you guys who are listening. So um, if you look at our um, the banner we had, so we start at MGV. So, mate, I just wanted to ask then, um, what was your worst experience so far in the markets or in general with mental health or, or something you've experienced that you'd like to share? Sure, sure. It's a, it's a very interesting question. And yeah, it's very similar to the one from, from Ange. But I'm, I'm going to just tell it from the beginning, uh, how it started. Uh, even though I'm an engineer since, since my sophomore year, I placed all of my professional focus in finance, capital markets, and I'm looking to get into investment banking this summer once I graduate school. And so you could say I first got into the markets through value investing. So I acquired some literacy from reading Lynch, Marx, Buffett, the investment grades, I mean. And that's how I knew back in 2019, in November, that COVID was going to be big and it could inflict a market-wide shock. And once the crash took place in February 2020, I just went bold deep, the bold deep in the market, all in. I had 4K in savings, and I never doubted that it was going to be a generational opportunity. Uh, I invested 3,000 into equities and 1K into crypto. This was a spot play. And besides that, this was aligned with the BTC halving, which we all know it's a narrative that pushes bull markets in, in crypto. 
And so I started my journey over there. And in the meanwhile, I started to play with leverage at FTX, aping calls from Cold Blood the Schiller, from Kaleo, from SC. And the growth was massive. And I had never had that much money in my hands, you know. And during that time, I kept studying technical analysis and just improving my knowledge. And it felt good to understand price action and seeing the results. But the, the market was on, on an easy mode. Um, jumping back to May 2021, and before I go into what happened, is that I always placed focus on everything in trading, by, but I never, I underestimated risk management. So back to 2021, the 4K, those $4,000 had already turned into $90, $96,000, and I was obsessed with getting into the Six Figures Club. You know, a kid from Venezuela, a country where the minimum wage is $12 a month, uh, I couldn't believe it. So I ignored the best performance that my portfolio had already had at that time, which was a sound 24x from the beginning. And I decided to over risk and risk more. I was all in spot with altcoins, plus some leverage plays that I had in, in some sub accounts in, in FTX. And during the May crash, the market dumped and it kept bleeding as the day passed. All of my leverage plays got stubbed out and my portfolio entered into a downtrend. And I didn't want to look at the losses. It took me three weeks into, the t- you know, into I was brave enough to look at my FTX balance. And I had taken a dip from $96,000 all the way to, 40, to 40K. So that was a 60% drop in my net worth. And... Now it's the interesting part. How did that affect my mental health? Uh, you know, it's pretty easy to, to respond because my confidence went down. Uh, and since I never discussed money issue with my friends, because in Venezuela, that's a very delicate topic. And I had to deal with all of this internally. You know, the void in your stomach feels like something that will never go away. And you keep hurting yourself and punishing yourself thinking, OK, I should have taken profits. Uh, was it, I, was, I was so an idiot and I deserve this. And of course, I deserved it, but we were trading in an easy mode market. And those were some rough days. And something I got from my previous, you know, heartbreaks is that you, your brain needs serotonin to make you happy, at least at a hormonal level. So I just focused on going out, fresh air, exercising. And I took a break from the charts and the market. And once I realized I was ready to dive again, that was uh, a month ago. Yeah, I returned to the markets in June 2021. I realized all of the positive stuff. You know, I was still 10x up from where it started, which was $4,000. So I decided to focus on what it was left with instead of what I had. And this was an inflection point. Uh, I could either check it out or actually learn from this experience. And all of the OGs had actually gone through something like this and bounced back. So I said to myself, why wouldn't I be capable of doing this? Uh, and after that, I just decided to become an active member in the community. And that's, her, and that's when I decided to start MGV Capital, the account I wish I had followed when I was a newbie. And that was the main motivation for all of this, to help as many of you, you know, to avoid the mistakes that I already did in the market. And this profile has given me more than I could ever ask for. So, And that's when I understood that everything happens for a reason. And something that I want to point out from this is that I realized that and something that I just keep as a pro, uh, as my premise and the motto is that your failures, they don't define who you are. It's how you react to them, what does. So, yeah, just keep learning from your mistakes and you will become a better person day by day. That's my experience. Yeah, man, that's a good one. Like, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, yeah, I haven't been through a similar thing sort of myself, which I can touch on later. But, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, don't. If anyone's listening, don't let your mistakes define who you are as a person because, um um, I've just quickly brief to, to interject there. I, I put in the Discord earlier on. Um, yeah, look, I've failed so many more things. And, uh, you know, before you find your feet kind of thing, which, you, which sounds like you did, and then you can sort of insert the old meme for I've failed more things than you've started, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is a good one. But, but mate, look, thanks very much for sharing that. Um, I'll throw it to Johnny now. So, Johnny, did you want to jump in with your um, a spiel at all? Yeah, sure thing. So, uh, yeah, MGV, thanks for sharing. Actually, my, my story is somewhat similar, I suppose, where uh, I got into, well, first of all, I bought, you know, a decent amount of spot after the COVID crash, and then all my businesses got shut down, and, and very quickly I had time to follow something I'd always wanted to do, which was really learn properly how to do technical analysis, because, you know, I always thought, you know, I think I'm probably going to be pretty good at this, but I never had any time to really concentrate on it. So, uh, you know, I really focused on trading Bitcoin and altcoins. And this was when Binance futures really started taking off. Everyone was trading Binance futures. So, uh, you know, I was taking just little risk, like 1% risk, you know, I was making some money, losing some money. Overall, you know, market was easy mode, so I was making money overall. 
Um, and then I got kind of into DeFi around the end of 2020, which was towards the end of like the first major push of Ethereum uh, DeFi. And I just couldn't really make any money because the fees were getting crazy, like 500 buck round trip. Uh, you know, if you only want to play with a couple of thousand dollars, it's just impossible to make money. Uh, and I made a few early bits in uh, Binance Smart Chain, just really thinking, I think a lot of money is going to move here. And very quickly, my, you know, the amount of capital I had to play with just multiplied like crazy. I did, you know, I, I did a 200x pretty early on. Um, and, you know, things really changed there. And then I really got into aggressively yield farming, data mining. I was, I was data mining all these projects because this was before Launchpad. So like eight out of 10 projects launching just rocked straight away. And one out of 10 would, would moon and one out of 10 would just fail, right? So the whole key was finding, just avoid the rocks, try to find those two out of 10, bet on those. And, you know, one of them is going to moon. So this was like 12, 14 hours a day, every day. Every day my, my money was going up. Like I was making money every single day, you know, more money than I ever thought I'd make in the market. Um, you know, and I, I was around in 2018. So I thought, you know, this is never just going to go up all the time. I know I'm going to need to get out, but there's no way it's just going to crash 50% overnight. And then like MGV said, that is pretty much what happened. Woke up one day and everything was, everything in DeFi was like 50% down. Um, and, you know, I, I worked out a couple of days before how much I had and it was, for me, not so much about the money. Like I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm used to making money, losing money. You know, overall, progressing in life. Um, but for me, it was really that money represented a certain sort of mental safety net because my business was getting opened, is getting closed. We didn't know how long we we're going to be closed for. We didn't know if we we're going to open again. And I always had this feeling that okay, this money means that you know I have X amount of months so I can pay my staff, I can pay my rent, I can take care of everybody. And then it was just taken away from me. And, and that was really difficult, to be honest. Uh, that that was the hardest thing. You know, I'm used to failing, but having that mental safety net taken away at what was a really difficult time for business was really tough. Um, so actually, once it finally had hit me, it, it took a few days, like, like MGV said. You know, I didn't really want to work out how much I had. And I eventually said, look, you have what you have. There's no point in you reflecting and saying, look, I'm 50% off and I was about 50% down by the time I cashed everything out all time high of my portfolio. This is just what I have today. So I just need to start with this as, as my trading portfolio and figure out what to do. And what I did was I, I really concentrated on learning technical analysis. I spoke a lot more to people like, uh, George and other guys that I was really close to trading and we practiced a lot and we weren't really making money because the, the, the market was in difficult mode for quite a while there until the second run up into all time highs. But I felt like I was growing every day. Like I, I was making a little bit of money, um, but I was mentally growing. And I think that's what helped me uh, the most out of that situation. Like, uh, you know, it's not something I share very openly, but I'm not, I'm not embarrassed about it. I've had a, a history of dealing with depression. I've had a history of dealing with addiction issues. Um, I think it's safe to say by now that they're all behind me. But, you know, I'm used to dealing with these kind of negative emotions that come up. And I think the more you deal with it and you just accept where you are rather than, you know, dreaming about where you were or dreaming about where you want to be, just accept where you are and say, okay, these are the steps I need to take to not get to like my dream life, but just to get to the next level. Like what is one level up from where you are? Just one step at a time. That's what I try to focus on. What's one step up from where I am today? So I, I think that's, that about sums up my experience. I'll, I'll hand it back to you, Mindset. Yeah, cheers. Thanks so much for that. I mean, yeah, I'm hearing it. You know, um, many baby steps, you know, equal one big step kind of thing. And, you know, we've chatted before about um, the likes of addiction and, and things we've put past us, but um, that does lead um, conveniently for me in a selfish way into um, my, my own intro. So, look, for me personally, so I said I was around for 2017 um, and then into 2018. We all had those investments, you know, we all sort of, you threw money at the market, things happen, right? Shit happened real quick. And I remember going from an investment of sort of like two grand Aussie, which is sort of like 1500 bucks US at the time, to like 100K-ish in, you know, a matter of like two months before the crash. And you think you're a genius. And you're sitting there, you know, you're telling your mates, you're telling everyone. And um, yeah, you just go, all right, fuck, now the market's going to crash, which we didn't know about. Um, I'd moved 
um, towns to go start a new construction division at the time for the company I was working at. And um, yeah, look, it was a it was a high paying, high stress corporate job. Uh, I realized what I'd done is I'd built um, my lifestyle around needing that income. And I've got a few, you know, a few kids, I should say. I'm not want to be quite specific, but um, you know, and my wife and I, we we realized that was what our lifestyle was funded on, and it was kind of like this, um, the toxic relationship. And I wouldn't compare it to domestic abuse by any means, because that's absolutely stupid, you know. But it was a toxic relationship with, um, like the, the job I had with the lifestyle I we had that we we're funding ourselves with, and um, I ended up turning to alcohol, you know, like uh, to talk about the, the addiction sort of phase. And um, although addiction is quite a sharp word, it's um, it was something I found myself going to quite often. And, um, you know, you'd, you'd finish your job that you hated, you'd get back, you'd have a beer or whatever, maybe a glass of wine, and, you know, that just kind of made the day okay. And then you get to the point where um, it, it gets bigger and bigger each time and, and the job that you hate going to, you end up counteracting that with a few drinks, you know, and a few drinks turns into this, it turns into that. You become... Um, uh, out of shape, wouldn't say like super overweight or anything, but just completely out of shape. And then, uh, yeah, you know, I used to get this terrible anxiety. You know, I generally had um, anxiety in the background, which made me a good project manager, manager, in my opinion, to try and work a few things out or, or plan ahead of the game because you didn't want to get caught out because anxiety was the always the bitch on your shoulder that was um, going to call you out for what you did or didn't do, right, in your own mind. But, um, yeah, what I found was mixing alcohol with that and – waking up the next day with a terrible feeling of guilt for something, you know, when you didn't do anything wrong, but then you have to drive for a a long time, big commute to get to this place of work that you hate. And it was just this perpetual cycle of misery, which is dramatic because I I had it much better than than, um, most in comparison without being an egotistical jerk about it. But just if you look at it at a face value, the things that you had compared to what other people in the world might want, a lot was there. But, you know, here's this guy who is trying to cope drinking alcohol because he hates what he made for himself which is a load of shit when you kind of look back on it, but it's it's what people face every day. So, yeah, within that, um, I, I did find that I just generally had a, an anxious mess of a life and it, it wasn't until I changed things up completely um, to change that perpetual cycle and you look back a few years later and you kind of go, shit, you know what, like that was, um, I was in a bit of a hole there. And, yeah, you know, once you've come out of that hole and you, you surface, that's when you can start to help others, which is, the whole premise of what we do and, and sharing things for free and all that sort of jazz, as you and I chat about, Johnny. But yeah, um, with regard to the investment, you know, the other thing to touch on that side of the, the corporate life and that is you, your wife starts to get to know that you've got money sitting there. And anyone who's in crypto who tells their missus or their husband or partner about it, you know, they're on your case going, what's it at today? What's it at today? So then you go, oh, we're, we're laughing. You know, we've got 100K. We, we hit that six figure. And then you start to creep in, right? It's like that, um, it's just that that knocking on the door. You kind of go, shit, all right, now today we're down 5%. Oh, okay, now it's now another 5%. Shit, let's jump back up. And then, you know, the wife's like, sell, sell, sell. And you're like, no, we're going to hold, hold, hold. And then at the end of the day, you know, it's, um, it goes to shit. So we ended up getting out um, with a little bit. But, yeah, like at the time, we, we watched the 100K investment fall back to just like 10 grand even. So, it was so stupid back back then because it could have helped out a big time, a, a lot. Sorry, but yeah, it's um, it goes to show that no one is immune to these kinds of things. So, um, especially the wife part. So, with that being said, um, yeah, as a as a light hearted sort of segue, um, Charlie, mate, if you wanted to grab the floor, it is yours. Yeah, cheers, mindset. I mean, my story isn't too dissimilar to yours, to be honest. I mean, I got in in twenty seventeen. And I'd just finished uh, selling one of my businesses. So I was kind of taking a bit of a break from life, just enjoying things. And I got into crypto with a few friends. And yeah, I kind of joined it. Yeah, it's it's the rise and the fall for me that I think was probably the worst experience. Because people always like idealize the rise, right? And think, wow, what a great time. I'm incredible. And it is from like a monetary perspective, right? Um, on the assumption that you keep it, which I'll come on to. But the kind of stresses and the strains that you get, uh, you know, trying to chase the next pump every day, your mate's just made a 10x, you've just done a 2x, a measly 2x in a day. Oh, the fucking woes, do you know what I mean? It's, it's quite stressful. And what I found that I was actually doing was 
I was giving up sleep, my friends, my family. You know, I've got a daughter, had a very young daughter at the time, um, my wife, all that kind of stuff. You just get focused on this thing that was this, I guess, euphoric bull market where everything was kind of popping left, right and centre. And the rise up was quite stressful. And then the, <laughs> the subsequent fall after, um, yeah, was was unexpected by me. I mean, you look back at things like Wall Street cheat sheets and psychology of market cycles and all this kind of nonsense, and actually it fits uh, it fits the Bitcoin chart of 2017 quite well. Um, and yeah, I guess as a result of that crash, I guess I, I because I didn't have anything else going on at the time in terms of like uh, business building or anything like that. I, I was just focused on crypto. Uh, it felt like quite a big part of me failed. And whilst I was used to failure before, I wasn't really used to sort of 60% drops in a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, I mean, it led me to quite a, a dark place at the time, I guess. And it took me months to come out of it. And, you know, people focus on the ups. And I I, I did do all right out of it. I'm not going to sit here and complain. Um, you know, I, I made a couple of multiples on what I put in, but you always do that stupid thing of compare to what you could have had. And the reality is you, you don't have it until it's in your bank account. And yeah, you know, stayed in the market obviously since then and learned to trade and so on and always had a plan and a portfolio plan to kind of manage the psychological side of trading for me personally. And I'll always, I do a weekly review still to this day of my entire exposure just to manage that kind of how much am I willing to risk right and that helped me massively like manage my anxiety manage my uh, depression and just grow my trading basically so yeah that's kind of my worst experience which led into i guess why i'm so so much of a planner and a uh, <laughs> like yeah. evaluator these days that that's that's really good to share as well i, I definitely touch on the point there with um or agree and feel that when you manage, when you learn to manage yourself, that's probably the most, I guess, relieving or um, uh, I don't really know how to term it, but yeah, it's kind of freeing, I guess. Yeah, and I think, you know, just journaling your trading emotions as well as actually, you know, your investment thesis and things like that is, you know, for me, huge because I make terrible, or I used to make terrible decisions when I was emotionally charged. Yeah, I like. Uh, I did like the measly two X. That was quite good as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just wild times, right? And honestly, yeah. like we had those conditions again in twenty twenty one. But it's the things that you're sacrificing for that that you just don't see at the time. You know, you lose track of reality. Spending eighteen hours a day in front of a computer just just isn't healthy. It's just not right. Yeah. If you balance yeah. it out with other things. And you do, you're, you're cognizant of your mental health, then yeah, maybe, and maybe some people can handle it. But in my experience, it's not the majority of people that can handle it. Yep, I agree. And I'd, I'd say that you, um, a few of us on here, would be able to um, agree and um, put forth and testify for that based on direct messages that you'd get with many people requesting help or funds or what to do next. So yeah, it's, um, it, it can be pretty wild out there. Um, all right, um, Arch, mate, if you wanted to grab the floor now, you are more than welcome to. Cool, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so for me, uh, it's, it's, it really resonates what you guys are, uh, did experience. So for me, I joined the market in like April 21, and then I felt like a fucking hedge fund manager because we put our money in, and then I looked at Twitter on what people were posting, like which coins, then I fucking bought like, VRA and UBX and like two days later I 2x'd my initial investment I was like what the fuck is this this is crazy and uh, so yeah we've 2x'd our main portfolio and then obviously the dump happened and like friends were saying yeah hold 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 don't sell don't sell and then you get caught up in that whole vibe right and then yeah I, I basically hold it and then yeah very much down as well so I think I lost like 50 or 50 to 70 percent and then we were like me and me and a friend of mine okay let's let's join the signal group that we found on twitter um so then we joined but then obviously the signals 
when they are when they're posted they pump like immediately one two percent and you are again left back holding so all in all it, the the negative emotions really get to you and the 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 fucked up part of losing money constantly and not regaining anything. So um, I met like a couple of really good amount of people there that that which I traded, which I learned technical analysis. So then I I made like money on my own, which was really good to to, to experience, to feel, and then that was mainly my my biggest motivations to um, to, to learn it myself. So that, yeah, yeah. The, um, yeah, definitely resonates with me as well. Um, with yeah, finding good people and, and a good crew to to work and sort of build yourself up with, I think that's that's key in this recipe. Yeah, exactly. That really helps. Yeah, cool. It does. Yeah, it definitely does. You know, they can build you up or um or bring you down. So it's not only is it about finding a good crew, but it's um yeah, also trying to maintain relationships as well. I think I think as well. Um, mate, if you are um, happy to pass the mic on, Yaro, if you've got a sec, mate, you could do the intro and then yeah, it's all yours, the floor. Yeah, sure. First, uh, I apologize for the difficulties that happened, and I want to thank Mindset and other guys for letting me join uh, this session. Really appreciate it. So basically, I come from a medical background, so I worked as a nurse in the past and also in the pharmaceutical industry. And uh, basically I got into crypto like in 2017, like the majority of you are. So what I started to do in parallel uh, working at a hospital, since uh, I knew English very well, uh, I talked with my friend and we decided to kind of approach ICO projects, just like DMing them for a collaboration on translation services of, of their white papers, of their websites. At that time, that that thing was popular because a lot of uh, ICOs used, let's say, Google Translator, which was fucked. And you, especially as I'm Russian and I'm like reading in Russian, let's say, a project, it, it was completely horrible. So that's why I've kind of approached the project and say, hey, let me just help you with the translations and that kind of we can discuss that's kind of my first interaction that i went into crypto and kind of starting to dive in more into details what it is how does it work how's the how does it function it what is blockchain and so forth so uh, basically when i got my first payment from a company that uh, paid around several of ethereums at that time so it was around like two thousand dollars so i'm like what the fuck is this oh my god i was so impressed that i could earn that much uh at that time because like comparing again to the economy and also the ruble obviously that that was huge money for me so uh, basically then i decided to like probably most are at that time ethereum was pumping uh, before the market crash and the bearish market. So I decided to kind of withdraw a little bit of uh, uh, the money for living and the rest I'll just keep holding and kind of wait uh, if like and hold my prayers, let's say it like that, that it was going to go uh, up. I didn't have any knowledge at that time. I was still a noob and I didn't know how to like even think about taking profits or anything. I didn't think about that at all. So I just decided to hold and went that market crash came uh my let's say let's say five hundred dollars that i withdrew and 1500 left instead of 1500 it became like five hundred dollars and i'm like what and i'm like obviously devastated and i just took that money until like it, it gone it gone ethereum gone even more down so obviously at that time uh, it was really for me kind of a struggle because I was still struggling financially due to not a good payment at a job that I was working for. Plus, I was still looking for another job and facing a lot of sexism actually from the pharmaceutical part of the job that I was doing because no one wanted to hire a man for some reason to work at a pharmacy. So that also damaged me even more uh, in my head to kind of, you know, 
literally think about like what am I doing at all and kind of you know uh, how to get out of this dark dark place that I went into and find some you know brightness and light to kind of lift me up and actually do something different and uh, to be kind of honest like at that time I was thinking about also apart from crypto freelancing so since uh, I I had some I had to learn some new skills obviously more in the marketing part and uh, basically I'm I just started to develop that, went to several courses, and then just tried to apply uh, to as many IT jobs as possible, especially in the fintech where crypto is. So I tried to apply there. I got several uh, proposals. I, I did work at a, a crypto company. I'm not sure which one already. I don't know if it exists anymore or not. But uh, eventually, the second thing came and again struggled me that they just kept firing people all the time. So you, let's say, work one, two months, and that's it. You get fired and you don't have stability. Plus, uh, all of the bear market, I didn't even invest because I didn't have the money to actually invest. Like, I'm not going to invest, let's say, you know, $3 or $5 and convert it into rubles, uh, which was not relevant to me. I rather kind of save the money and kind of find the job, save the money and kind of finally invest and keep investing and learning how to invest. So that's kind of where all of this came, like this mental issue, I would say, where I just was devastated. I was depressed. I was suffering depression. Uh, Apart from that, uh, I had bad relationships. and uh, obviously this went even more uh, in the worst case scenario where I just couldn't do anything at all. I didn't, I just want to close everything and basically just uh, stop and that's it and just lay on the bed and not do nothing. But uh, eventually I just talked to myself and said, you know, you, you can't live like this all the time. You, you have to get up. You have your whole life in front of you. You're still young. At that time, I was 23, 24. You're still young. You 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 have to do something because then you will just regret it. And then when you're going to be 40, 50, 60 years old, you're just going to regret of not doing anything. And like you're going to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what did I fucking do at all? Like nothing. So what helped me a little bit at least I, I just started to at my hometown go on the stadium and basically starting uh, running around the stadium making some several laps to just give me that you know freshness uh, enlightenment brightness in my mind so I can finally kind of uh, remove all of the negativity from my body and finally kind of regroup myself and digging in, like learning more, studying more about crypto, how to properly invest, you know, taking those profits, investing in quality projects. If you're risking in some projects, then, you know, you have to put just a small amount of money to do so. So that's basically it, like what I wanted to share. No, I appreciate that, man. That's, um, how it shows you're, you're continually grinding as an entrepreneur faced with um, a lot of issues, no doubt. And, one of the key takeaways I'm grabbing from that is the exercise portion. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with that as well. And I've got a good friend who's who suffered some some heavy addiction with some bad drugs, but he's on the mend now. And um, yeah, you know, he he can't uh, praise exercise enough in terms of getting him back out of the hole. So it's good to hear, man. Yeah. All right. Hey, look, that's the first round of queries done. Um, We'll go around and do the second, and then we will go for some questions uh, in about probably half an hour's time or so. But look, the second query we've got is, um, you know, as corny and cheesy or however you want to look at it, um, what's the best thing or your best experience so far in crypto or, or with mental health within the markets or, or something like that? So MGV, mate, if you're around soon and you wanted to grab the mic, it's all yours. <laughs> sure, mate. Thank you so much. So, well, well, when it comes to the best experience on, on mental health, uh, it has to be the friends that we've made here. So besides that and the network that I've built in this space, the best feeling from a psychological perspective, I think it has to be the dopamine you get each time a trade runs in your favor. 
it, you know, that feeds your, your inner gambler. It feels rewarding. It gives you the confidence boost you need and the reasons to, to keep grinding. And you're always one trade away from a winner. So that that automatically implies that you have never that you should never give up. And my best experience, ironically, is associated with my biggest risk. So I remember I opened a leverage loan on, on Litecoin. This was the last year in an isolated sub account. So I was risking liquidation on that one. But this was the time with, when Litecoin went on a rally from 200 or 230, 240 to 400 bucks. And I remember I had never seen a, 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 such a big PNL as the one that I got from that one, as it turned out to be an 8K in profits. And up to this day, I haven't seen a, a similar one. But of course, that, that wasn't smart. That was a totally gambler position. And that's why I say that it's unironically to be associated with my biggest risk. But besides that, I can say that I that I've felt way better from knowing that I'm helping people out here in this space. And the gratification is huge, you know, from putting out educational content, something that the people can actually use and it adds to their game and, you know, just from from our knowledge to to reach them. And some people have actually taken the time to write beautiful things in, in my DMs when, when they reach out. And that makes it absolutely worth it every single second of this. And that gives, in my opinion, more dopamine that, than hitting big profits. But of course, I mean, I'm looking forward to both of them. So <laughs> we'll see what we get in the future. Yeah, awesome, man. It, there's, um, I agree. There's nothing better. Is that you receive that message and, and people tell you that um, you know lives have been changed, kind of thing, or, or you've helped them out, and that's just it. Really ticks a box, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's that's great. I mean, that's the best feeling that you can get from from Twitter. Just helping people out. It feels so. Yeah, it feels it feels so good, man. It doesn't compare to any other feeling. It lets you know that's that you're right. doing the right thing. So so yeah, looking forward to that. Yep, helping people is first 8K Litecoin gains, second. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Yeah, and the profits will follow. I mean, money is just a byproduct of, of your trading. If you're doing things right and if you're doing things right in, and if you're doing the good things in life as well, money is going to come by itself. But money is not the thing that you, sh- that you should be chasing. Money is just a byproduct of your actions and your game. So, yeah, don't focus on the money. If you're trading good, let the profits come and it will do it by yeah. itself. Yeah, 100% agree. 100% agree. Um, next one, uh, we've got our mate Johnny Jacks up. Thank you, Moise. So uh, I've got this sneaking suspicion that, that most people's answers are probably going to be pretty much the same. So you guys listening should probably take notice that, you know, we're not really selling. I mean, we're not selling anything here at all. And if our answers are the same, there must be something to it. Because my answer really is pretty similar in terms of uh, – in terms of what we do as traders is really weird, right? All of us have got like friends that we talk to a little bit about crypto or they know we're the crypto guy, right? So they, they ask they call their crypto questions to us or we've got our wives, our husbands, whatever, you know, that we share maybe more or less about, but no one in the world understands what we're going through except for someone else who's going through something else. I'm not saying that we're, we're in a war or something terrible, right? But we're going through a very unique situation that has some, really tangible and often pretty intense uh, stresses and psychological, you know, issues that we have to deal with. And having friends, you know, I had, I had, first of all, you know, just individual friends on Telegram that I'd reach out to, you know, guys around Twitter or, you know, various other places online. And then got a little group going with George and eventually Mindset joined and that grew into the, the Mindjack thing that we do today. And, you know, in, in crypto, I think we often get criticized quite a lot for just talking absolute shit all the time. So a lot of us, we're sharing our ideas. Like, you know, I share my charts. That's a serious thing. You know, I, that's that's my trading. That's my that's my money. But I also just share a lot of absolute crap and talk a lot of absolute crap. But I think that's needed. That's that's the way that we that we actually get through this thing that we're doing. So I think the most valuable thing to me has been the, the network I've grown in terms of, of course, the more people you know, you get uh, asymmetrical access to information in the markets, whether that be, you know, uh, people sharing their setups, people sharing projects that they're interested in, etc. And of course, that can turn into profits. But as MGV said, you know, it's not purely the profits that we're looking at. Uh, you know, for me, a lot of the effort I put into trying to teach people 
of course, is a little bit altruistic, but at the same time, it is a little bit selfish because uh, the more time I spend helping people, the better I feel about you know myself and those messages that we receive. They are genuinely, they do genuinely affect me psychologically. I feel like now maybe I'm not changing the world, but maybe I'm changing somebody's world, and that that means something to me. Um, so, so my best experience has really been all about people. Like the, the money follows. You know, if I if I stay in this market for long enough, I'll reach my goals. That's pretty much guaranteed. But uh, the people is is really what it's all about, and that's been my best experience for sure. Yeah, I think you've copied my notes. I, I did guess that I might be. So <laughs> yeah, I, lucky I was going before you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, that's it. Um, well, hey, look, yes, yeah, so segue into to my spiel and. Um, yeah, look, the, the best thing for me is the people, truly, you know, so you, you do make friends online, um, you build a community, so you're either building one or you're, you're working within one. Um, we're all in it for the tech, right? Right? So, you know, we're all here for a reason. We're not here for the tech, let's be honest. You know, you've, you've started out, you've lost a shitload of money down the track, um, well, I personally did. And then you, you want to overcome those losses by um, supplementing them with gains, of course, whether they're in the form of crypto or personal friendships or or whatever or communities you build you know it's it's all about that and the thing that blows me away is the amount of people in crypto that just want to do shit for free to to help out you know that's just it just blows me away and um you know i've certainly haven't been shy to that myself uh you know i'll do happily you know if someone said to me would you get up at three in the morning to go to work you'd be like no that sucks but this morning, I've got up at three in the morning to do this spaces. And like, I'm more than happy to do it. It's, it's awesome. You know, it's, it's it. It's the vibe. You know, it's what is being put out there to chat with good people right now. You know, put that tweet out there about two and a bit weeks ago, I think, just to ask who's interested. And look, we've got, you know, like just people who are, are down for a chat just to talk about good shit with good people. It's, um, it's not half the battle, you know, like it is the battle. So yeah, once you get it out of the way and you've got this, um, these good chaps and chapesses, if you will, that you can chat to, then, yeah, for me, it is, it is all about that. So, yeah, I can't um, keep repeating myself, obviously, but that's me. So, yeah, Charlie, mate, if you want to jump in, um, you're more than welcome to as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, mine are a bit different, you know. I think the best experience is, like, dunking on reply guys, getting rugged, you know, things <laughs> like that. <Yeah. laughs> no, I'm joking. It's pretty much the same thing. I had three notes, to be honest. And they're, they're kind of in an order, which is like helping people, which I think we've all said is pretty rewarding. You know, I was looking through our DMs mindset, you know, from back in 2021. It's, it's mad, really, you know, how you can just connect with people over the other side of the globe about like a common interest. It's great. Um, the next thing is shared experiences. So it doesn't matter whether you're in a group and you're sharing trades. <laughs> you might even be sharing being rugged or something. But I look back at some of my best experiences and they've just been shared ones. And that's kind of what's made them great, whether it's been a rug or whether it's been when you do an NFT mint with your friends and you're all seeing what you've got. You're all kind of excitedly sat around in Discord going, who got the shiny and who got the hot garbage that looks like fucking roadkill that's going to sell for nothing, you know? <laughs> and that, yeah. that kind of shared experience is great. You know, whether you're sharing good or bad trades, whatever it might be, just sharing it, having a group of people you can talk to connect with and who get it who are in the space right who are in crypto and understand the nuances you know when i say to people like in the real world oh i got rugged the other day you know it was a few k blah 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 not a problem they're like what the hell are you on about <laughs> but you talk to people in here and that's a that's a you know common experience um and then i think the third one is is what is what mgv said which is the kind of good trades or investments when you get that money in the back of your pocket right it's a nice feeling at the end of the day, and no one's going to take that away from you. It is a nice feeling. You get the dopamine. It's kind of one of the many reasons we're here. But, um, yeah, I think the other one's definitely trumpet. I think that's probably it from yeah. me. So uh, I'll pass over to Angie. Roger, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, this is, for me, it's basically the same, right? But to add on to what you guys said, so some of the guys that I've met in the Signal group – uh, I got kicked out of the single group at, at a certain point. So after uh, after a while, one of the guys that was still in there contacted me um, when I moved to Lisbon. And then I met him in real life. And then we hang out. It was really fun. And then eventually uh, it appeared that 
the, that all of the guys that I met there had a different group. So I got added in that, in that group. And then that was one of the best days because then I finally got to speak to them again. Um, yeah, it was really fun. And I'm still in the group and we discuss a lot of set, setups throughout the day. So basically I see trading more as a side business of my normal day, which is hanging out in discord all day, uh, which is really fun. And, uh, having and like this year I started a Twitter as well. So throughout the, through the Twitter, I met like a lot of people, uh, MGV, uh, Shinigami was also uh, listening now. Um, I speak to them daily as well, which is really nice because it adds so much more to trading itself because yeah, you talk with them all the time and learn from them as well, which is great. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. And also with, with the technical analysis thing, which I didn't know at all when I started, of course. So when I learned that and posting these trades on Twitter and seeing like these big guys actually liking it, for example, Muro liked a trade and then eventually followed me, uh, the same for a trader asset, which is like one of the biggest, uh, heroes for me in terms of price action trading. And when they, yeah, when they follow you, that's that's the best basically because it really gives you this this dopamine hit and this confluence that that what you're doing is actually right, which is yeah great. I like the way that you just threw in a, a trading term with mixing with people confluence. That's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's well played. That's good. <laughs> But yeah, um, that's true though. Like um, like you mentioned, Lisbon and, and getting kicked out of a group and meeting someone else. I've, I've never really thought, uh, especially in Perth here in Western Australia, there's not, I guess there's not too much of a crypto buzz, but Bit, crypto Bitlord does live not far from me. But anyway, um, imagine how many people you're actually walking past each day who could be going through the same thing mentally or crypto-wise where they're walking along going, fuck, do you know what? I got rugged again. And they're just in a miserable mood, but we just got no idea. They've just been rugged and... They might as well be allowed to ride the magic carpet and getting pulled by the genie, you know? So um, it's interesting. I, I, I have no idea. It's just a, a quick thought. But, um, yeah, there's probably a lot of people going out there doing the same thing. Hence the, the reason for this space. So, yeah, thanks for sharing, Arch. Um, Yaro, all yours. Thank you, mate. Yeah, so basically I have the same point of view as you guys. Uh, the priority is actually helping people to get their mindset right be motivated and actually do on day by day basis uh what uh, they want to do whatever it's crypto whatever it's trading whatever it's investing it doesn't matter as long as long as you're feeling uh that uh grief of joy then why not doing it so for me personally the excitement was when i actually uh was doing a small business and I just basically was more in marketing and I helped the person that wanted to join in a product that we were selling, but he was in an accident. And um, obviously I didn't rush him to kind of, you know, pitch him, let's say the product uh, that we were offering. So I told him, you know, get better, recover when you feel all good and fixed up, then we can just discuss and just do it back and then. Uh, at that time, I was still using Facebook, and he wrote a very genuine comment uh, regarding me, how I was very supportive, how um, yeah, I was kind of keeping in touch with him. And it was not even about selling, it was just, you know, like human nature, and how, however you want to call it. And probably at that time, it just flinked me in the head that probably I need to do something more better to help people around the world how I can with the experience at least what I had or what I have now so that's where I think probably the thing is to kind of build a podcast where I can sh just share my thoughts and kind of explain what I went through or maybe something related to a person who went to this uh, went through the same thing as I did and if it even helps one person I'm only happy same thing I do on Twitter so I just basically post something like motivational or just something like mindset, mindset shifting. And that's basically it. if it just helps one person. For me, that's already a, a happiness in my heart and soul. That's, that's basically all I can say. 
No, that's um, that's a really good point to raise. And um, I, I dare say, and I'm going to throw this out there for everyone, so correct me if I'm wrong, probably except for Johnny. Yara, I would say that we've all probably chatted with you in the past through DMs or whatever the case, whether it was at Delta back in the day or currently. Um, so, mate, you've got all of our respect in the fact that you have probably, um, although you may have realised or not, but helped each one of us here. So, mate, I think you should be proud of that as well. Yeah, I appreciate it. As long as I'm helping, that's mission accomplished. All good, mate. Thanks for sharing. Um, all right, so this is the last round of questions. Uh, sorry, last query from Aaron before we do open the floor for some questions from you guys if you can. So um, the last one here is what's the funniest thing? So just to end a, a, a somber kind of discussion that we all we all uh, share, which is in fact reality, um, yeah, let's end it on a bit of a lighter note. So MGV, um, if you want to share the funniest thing you've got, um, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> sure, sure again. And, you know, reaching out on what Charlie said and mentioned earlier, it's really good to, to school some guys in your replies. It feels good. And there's gratification in that as well. But now, circling back to, to the funniest experience. Um, this one a, is a personal story. And I remember I was playing a call from Hyper Bitcoin. And this was around 3 a.m. But we were on vacation, me and my friends. And we were in, a, in an Airbnb in L.A. And the call just printed a green deal. And we were all super hyped because we were watching the PNL together. But... It wasn't realized PNL. And the following day, we went to Nobu and I decided to pay for dinner. And as you guys may know, Nobu is super expensive. And the day after, we were leaving to Denver and the trade actually got stopped at break even. So it had gone from a 4K PNL to a zero gain trade. And if you add the $900 bill from Nobu, you can say that it was a loser. So you can tell it wasn't the smartest decision, but it surely was a, a funny one. And of course, I, I didn't ask any of my friends for, for dinner to pay for, for money to cover dinner. But it was great. And we were all just laughed about it. But yeah, that's a, that's the kind of stuff you get when trading. That's it. I, I think if I can, if I've got a, tea, uh, a key takeaway from that, it's don't write checks, your butt can't cash. Exactly. Like exactly. That. <laughs> 100%. Lost the, lost the Nobu gains. <laughs> no, no, so that's that's awesome. Um, yeah, if, if you're good, mate, I'll throw to Johnny for um for his uh, answer to this question. Sure, let's hear from Johnny. Sure, thank you, mindset. So, uh, you know, these days is a little bit less for sure. Like I, I've been around longer, but I'm, I still, I think, suffer from the the syndrome that a lot of us get, where like you win a trade or you win a couple of trades, and you're like the best trader of all time. Like you're the greatest. And then, uh, you know, you lose a trade, you lose a couple of trades, and you're like, I'm just fucking terrible at this trading thing. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I keep trying to do this. Like, I'm the worst. So this was like back when I was still pretty much swinging from one to the other a lot more than I do these days. And uh, I, I planned out this short, right, where um, I actually wanted to set some limits. And I was so sure about this short, I was going to set some limits, which isn't something that I usually do at all, especially not anymore. And... Uh, on an exchange, and I won't mention the exchange, but there's an exchange that I use that if my computer goes to sleep and then I wake it up again and it's still on the PL screen, it'll show the PL as it is if the trade was still open, even if that trade's already been stopped out or if that trade's already taken profits, for example. And if you refresh the browser, then it you know it shows the actual PL. So uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go to bed. I, taught, I thought about this trade, thought about it, thought about it talked myself out of the trade, canceled the limits, went to bed, woke up, opened my computer, see this massive PL on the screen in front of me. And I'm just beating myself up, what the fuck am I doing? Once again, I talked myself out of a great trade. I've been planning it all week, etc., etc. Refresh the page, p and still there. So I'm thinking, okay, this exchange is really, really screwing with me now. Open my phone, log into that, p and is also there go and check the trades and I'd left for whatever reason I was sure I cancelled the trades but somehow I hadn't and I remember talking to George about this and it was one of my best trades that month and it played out almost perfectly purely by mistake so I think uh, and, and of course immediately I thought okay yeah, I'm a god trader just forget everything I said before I, I am the god so I think uh, that that's the funniest experience I've had where I've just switched from thinking I'm the worst thing ever to the best thing since sliced bread, literally within three minutes. 
purely because of a mistake of mine. There's, there's something to do with trading where uh, you get rewarded for being a retard pretty often in trading. So. <laughs> but, okay, the, uh, let me interject with the, um, this is not financial advice. Yeah, <laughs> so, don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so that really, Johnny, what I take from that is you're the PNL or, you know, like you see the meme, PNL or, but, um, oh, but yeah, that, that's cool, man. Um, all right, well, look, I'll jump into mine. Mine's probably a weird one, to be to be honest. Um, it was back in 2018, 2019, and, you know, we all had bags. You're holding bags. You're heavily weighed down by them, and you become a community member. So um, I have a background in project management, so I was like, look, fuck it. I'm going to help this, this mob out. I'm going to help them out because I want my money back. But in general, I just got a kick out of doing the same shit, um, similar to what I do today, but uh, it was mainly just a biz dev perspective. Anyway, so I'm helping them out for a few months. It's all volunteer work, just trying to get my investment back. And then we had this really strange application for like a CEO uh, slash main man kind of thing. And, and I was kind of sitting in the role at the time and I was like, I don't really care if someone else can come along and they're interested and then that's all right. But we had this like weird, we confirmed that we wanted to chat to this person based on the initial sort of discussion with whoever their rep was. Anyway, so we started to get these weird requests for certain types of phone calls. You know, you'll, you'll get a phone call from this number, you need to hang up, and then you need to pick up the, your phone to ring another number back. And I was like, okay, um, weird, but I like it. I'm going to give it a go. And anyway, so we, we line this up, and um, we're going to interview this guy. So the phone rings. This American guy starts chatting to me. Um, he says, you need to ring this number back. Uh, this is during the 2018-19 thing where I was doing the depression kind of thing in the the drinking and had my own issues, this weird thing comes out of the blue. And uh, anyway, so I ring this number back and the guy goes, uh, yeah, hello, sir. I was like, yeah, uh, who's this? And he goes, this is John McAfee. And it was John McAfee, the man himself, who um, we confirmed through him, through Twitter, through DM, that he was on the phone applying to be a fucking CEO of the, the project that we were managing. And I was like, this thing's like 6 million market cap. Like, what's going on here? And um, we chatted for 20 minutes. I was kind of like gobsmacked, like, what is going on? And uh, we chat for 20 minutes. And then he drops the bomb and he goes, um, I'm not doing anything unless you give me 20% of the total coin supply. And uh, I just laughed. I was like, mate, that is not happening. Um, I've seen what you've done. I was there in the days of the John McAfee coin of the week. I made money off it, don't worry, with Reddit coin and all that sort of shit. But, yeah, we, uh, I just was like, mate, it's not happening. Look, thanks for the call. Appreciate where you're at, but uh, it's a no from me, dog. And that was that. And it was such a strange thing, but um, priceless. It was fucking classic. But, um, yeah, look, with that being said then, um, Anch, um, I, I'm sorry who was next. It was Charlie, wasn't it? Charlie, you are next. So if you'd like to grab the mic. Yeah, man. I mean, I haven't really got that many, to be honest. But I was trying to think through it all. I think my worst one was probably, and it will it'll go back to the time, of 2017 and kind of how obsessed with it all I was. We literally, me and my wife, came home from dinner one night and I was absolutely bollocksed. I, I was, you know, basically, we'd been out to, I don't know, two in the morning or something. And she came home. She basically went off to bed. I grabbed the laptop because all my mates were telling me about this coin that I was, you know, all hyped about. And uh, it had Disney involved in. And a couple of you from 2017 are probably going, oh, no, I know what he's going to say. Dragon chain. Yes, boys and girls, dragon chain. So there was a very drunk me at two in the morning trying to send my Ethereum to Ether Delta and absolutely messing it up with the boys in Discord who were ripping it out of me. And thankfully, they scammed me out of my own ETH. And they gave it back to me the next morning when I was sober because <laughs> it was such a confusing process, the whole either Delta thing. And yeah, that was probably that was probably it for me. So drinking myself out of my entire ETH stack and getting rugged by my boys who then gave it back to me is uh, probably my highlight. Sounds like a dream. Okay, let's bring that back. <laughs> but yeah, but I do remember Dragon Chain. Oh, I, I remember Dragon Train for sure, and it was the next thing. Uh, yeah, 2017. Yeah, I can, I can see stacks. But that's it, yeah. And everything. God. That's, <laughs> yeah. Walt Disney <laughs> would sign yeah. and verify. Yeah, my stack's still on either Delta, I think. 
Yeah, right. I still remember the logo. That's insane. No, that's a good yeah, one. That's, that's a right. That, blue dragon coiling yeah. it. <laughs> but that's right. Holding your uh, your gains. <laughs> no, nice one. Nice one. Um, all right, Ash, mate, if you would uh, like to share your one, you are more than welcome to as well. Cool. Yeah, mine aren't so good as yours. I'm, I'm now looking at the dragon chain thing. It was like 15 cents, and now it's like fucking three or something. Crazy. Um, but yeah, mine... Uh, yeah, I also had the same thing with that certain exchange where it doesn't update if you just keep it open. So this one time I was, uh, yeah, also no, no risk management whatsoever. So I was just longing, shorting, whatever. Uh, I don't have that much knowledge yet, but technical analysis, like market structure. So I opened a trade. I think it was a short or something, um, but I thought I closed it. So then the next day I opened and I was like, it was also like a cross. Uh, it was not isolated, but cross. And I was like, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars at a loss. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? No, no, no. Almost crying. I was like, what the fuck is this? But then I refreshed and then it disappeared. And I checked through the uh, trade history and it was not there. So, and the balance was all right. So I was like fucking happy. Then I made a script since I'm a software engineer that automatically updates everything to isolate it and I never change it back to cross again. So that was like one of the worst things. <laughs> Ash, I think you've just opened up your DMs to people looking for magic scripts. <laughs> I still right. have it though. I, I open sourced it, so it's uh, it's available. Yeah, nice. Very nice. You watch, they're coming for you. <laughs> cool, mate. Thanks for sharing. Um, Yaro, if you would like to share as the last one, mate, um, absolutely all yours. Yep, thanks. Uh, probably my one of the funniest things. I don't know how it's going to be related funny or not, but basically in 2020, I learned, started to learn how to trade. And uh, around like, I, I put amount, a low amount of money to just start off. And um also without any knowledge or so without any kind of risk management and so forth i just placed some targets for where i can take profit whatever it's long or short so i was trading like for two weeks straight with kind of small profits generating uh in the pnl but uh, then i decided okay i need to learn about stop losses and uh, i decided oh i was trading ethereum usdt and uh, um, i decided okay i will place a, a stop loss here and the funny thing that came out that I was sure that it's it's probably not going to hit the stop loss because it was just pumping, pumping, pumping. But then just a huge candle went, took my stop loss, just that stop loss. It didn't go even below. And then it went uh, back up. And obviously I lost the percentage. And then I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> how, why did I even put those stop losses? I'd rather do it all manually myself where to close a trade, where to open the trade. And uh, that's basically it. I mean, that's all I can say. So you're saying we should all trade with you and use you as liquidity? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just at the ground, mate. It's all good. Now, look, thanks for that. Um, well, look, hey, that brings us to the end of the, the series of Round Robins around the table. But uh, we're happy to open the floor up to anyone who may have a question or query. You know, maybe we might do this for sort of um, you know, maybe 10 minutes or so. You're going to have to bear with me. Um, and possibly Johnny as well, and I might even invite someone else as a co-host. But, um, yeah, this is the first time we're doing a, a spaces, so it's going to be a bit awkward perhaps just to get people off the floor, but I'm sure we'll work through it. So if you've got a question and you want to request to put your hand up, you know, go for it. Don't be shy. I'm not going to bite. Someone's got a funny meme of, like, tumbleweed or something. That's right. Yeah, I'm just kind of going, is my mic on? No, we found one. Whereabouts? I can't see. They, they can speak. You can speak. Zalrek. Go for it, mate. It says connecting. Hello. There you go. There you go. Hi. How are you, Zalrek? Yeah, hi. No, yeah, um, thanks. Amazing. Uh, Great to listen to you, you people uh, talking about this. Um, good subject. Yeah, very, very rarely touched on, especially in crypto. 
I've only been in for a year, but uh, domains is my background. Um, I'm just wondering how you, how you uh, guys and girls uh, maintain your mental well-being, whether you're into meditation or you use nature or anything like that. I mean, personally, myself, I use both um, four years sober. Getting out of that has kind of given me a lot of insight and awareness into, into, into things beyond, beyond the form, it's, it's, without sounding too woo. <laughs> So, do you, do you do people meditate or anything like that? Yeah, look, I'll I'll quickly jump in because I know that um, Johnny actually put me onto it, but it was the um, the waking up app, and that really really helped me. And you know, I, I think that a key thing in in doing all this is that the wins are the wins, but the losses are also there. So you've got to recognise that and, and acknowledge them and have that sort of um, that plan of attack, if you will, in place to to counteract that. So. Yeah, look, I've got a process and I generally follow something called Saver GP, as it's called, which is um, silence, affirmation, visualization, exercise, reading, and then, you know, what you're grateful for and then what your priorities for the day are for. So, I mean, guilty of not doing it every day, but it's something that definitely is, is strive for. But yeah, 100% definitely meditate. That is um, a big part of what I do. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. for me, is uh, it's the same as meditation and, and exercise, really. So uh, I, I wake up, the first thing I do as soon as I wake up after the toilet <laughs> is uh, meditate for 10 minutes with the Waking Up app from Sam Harris. And, uh, and then I go straight to the gym and I do that for about an, an hour a day. So that's uh, they're, they're both, for me, different kinds of meditation. But it just sets me up for the day, clears my mind and uh, you know, helps my body and nourishes my soul and all that good stuff before I get into the markets and ruin my body and my soul. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah that's, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, big pun. Yeah, sorry, that's, uh, thanks to hear. Uh, good to hear that. So I think it's definitely essential to kind of uh, to, to zone into the meditation and just to, just to kind of take all of the kind of the fluff away and just to just to relax and uh, feel that awareness and co- higher consciousness <laughs> all right uh, amazing thank you so much guys thanks for the question appreciate it anyone else would like to ask a question at all any hands gone up I just can't see quite um, apostle, apostle, right? Um, there you go. I've added you as a speaker. I've added them too now. Oh, he might have just gone. I think we, we both added them at the same time and just wiped them out. There you go. Apostle, mate, your um, floor is yours. Unmute yourself, I think. Yep, yeah, um, mate, if you've got some technical difficulties, you can come back if you want. We'll leave you as a speaker for now, but if you can unmute and jump in, go for it. But if not, if someone else wants to ask a query, or we'll put the hand up, sing out. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you, mate. Go for it. Okay, great. So I, I was asking, first of all, thank you for, for, for the amazing words that you all of you shared. And the question is, do you have any way of identifying if it's if you are, like, stable to, to go into a day of trading, right? Like, if you have any issues in your personal life or, or if, if you can identify beyond the market conditions if you are ready to trade in a day, right? Like, do you do... An analysis of yourself and you have some sort of i don't know meditation before going to a trade or or anything like it charlie you go for it if you're off mute oh uh, yeah yeah sure um i personally do so i mean i don't do anything specific like meditate before or exercise before or anything like that i'm a bit more fluid in that respect but um, I do have a checklist of things. So if I'm tired, if I'm ill, if I'm hungover, things like that, 
um, will preclude me from trading that day. So, yeah, I think it's quite important because particularly how I've been trading lately, which is a um, much lower time frame, you kind of need your wit and emotion um, not to be a kind of hindrance. So, yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Nice. Does anyone else want to jump in for a proposal? Um, sorry if I've got your name wrong there, mate. Um, I, if no one else wants to, I'll quickly jump in. Um, yeah, look, no, no specific ritual before a trade, but the key thing that I've certainly developed over the last year and a half or so is the back testing. And when you've got that confidence in your back testing for trading and you know, you know that 75% of the time or 60% or 50% of the time you're going to have a win based on your, um, your risk, then, yeah, that, that really is, um, is freeing, you know, once you know that, you don't have to fire and, and get a bit worried once you've pressed that button. You just go, it is what it is. You know, you've got the confidence. You have the statistics behind you. You've back tested through replay function or you've used the cheat mode where you've got like a, a rectangle you've put on the screen on trading view and you've made it black if your screen is white or if you, you've made it white if your screen is black and um, just go and, go and back test. So, yeah, I can't stress that, that enough. You know, even if you need to go and do it for a month, um, so replay back to the previous month or 100 trades or something like that and just really develop that edge, that to me is um, something that really helps with the psychology behind it. Um, all right, so we've got another speaker up. Um, Chabby, sorry, mate, if I'm Chabby with, sorry, I couldn't yeah, see the rest of your name. Uh, can you hear Go for it, mate. I can, yeah, all yours. Okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, it's actually based on my experience. Mm. When there are missed opportunities, how do you cope with it? Uh, I've been to crypto since 2019 and I've missed so much opportunities that could have changed my life forever. And even until today, it still bothers me, especially when I'm on my losing days. It just makes me feel worse mentally. And I try to stay positive, but it just won't get out of my mind. Uh, how? how uh, what would you recommend to like at least... Uh, probably help it a bit or do something to probably change the whatever I, I am thinking of right now yeah that's cool yeah I, I get you um, Yaro I saw you come off mute did you want to jump in there at all yeah I just want to add a few points so uh, basically uh, how I think of it is that you must understand and always think about that you will have new opportunities that are going to come towards you you just have, have to understand that, okay, you lost opportunity, you have to just bear with it and that's it. And you, you just have to forget about it. You just have to focus on the new opportunities that are going to come through you. It, it all happened to us. I lost a lot of opportunities as well in crypto, uh, probably mindset, Johnny and others as well. And uh, like the biggest probably advice I can just say is just be prepared for the new opportunities that are going to come. They will come for sure. There's no doubt about it. There's no such thing as like, okay, I lost this opportunity and that's it. There won't be no more opportunities at all. That's it. It's over. It's never over. Until you're constantly persuading what you're doing, a new opportunities are going to come. And once they come, you grab them. And that's it. That's, what, that's all I can say. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you, boss. I agree with that. Just... Uh... You know, to jump in very briefly, uh, I you know I've, I've I've done pretty well. I can't complain at all. But I've also you know I could have been a billionaire. You know if I if I bought all the things that I maybe could have at the time, and uh, you know I'm not a billionaire. Surprise, surprise. But uh, you know you never lose until you quit, and and sometimes you should quit because you know there are other things you could do with your time that perhaps are better for you. But if you feel like you know, I like this, I enjoy it, I want to continue to do this. Until you quit, you never lose. Like, the next best trade is ahead of you all the time. It, it, for every single one of us. I've had some great trades, but I know my best trade of all time is in the future. So, as long as you keep going, that's the main thing. Don't don't give up. Don't get stuck in the past. Just focus on the present and plan for the future. Thanks, man. I'll keep on doing that.
Yeah, I, I just wanted to say as well, I totally agree with that one. Um, I had a, sorry to bring it down onto it, but I had a friend pass away uh, last year. He was only 39 and, and it was um, of cancer of all things. And um, it was it was very sad. And obviously we, we lost a good person very young. But um, yeah, he had a saying and it was, um, it is what it is. He, he came to terms with him. You know, that's the ultimate thing, right? I mean, he came to terms with what he was, the demise he was facing, but you know that's nothing compared to crypto and, and losing a, a gain or an opportunity. But um, it's just something that I really took with me, for, and I will do for the rest of my life to say that yeah, you, you've had an opportunity, but um, even in the the face of death or the throes of whatever is coming your way, you had a shitty day, shitty week. You can just sit back and just go, you know what? It is what it is. And um, yeah, I, I, that, it gives me closure thinking that that he also found that too. So. Um, certainly not as extreme as crypto, but it's just something that resonates with me and, and I carry into the day. And if you lose a trade, you know, you, you just go, fuck it, shit happens and just move on. Um, all right. Well, look, anyone else have any queries? Because we should start to wrap up shortly. We've been chatting for an hour and 20 minutes now and we, we sort of wanted to run it for about this time, which is good. We've done really good time and I think, Thanks to all the speakers as well for jumping in and taking their part and, and sticking to time frame. So, yeah, if there's anyone else that wants to throw one last question in, we're happy to receive it. If not, don't be shy. Um, you know, this has been really good. This is the first time we've all done together. Um, some of us haven't even spoken before, which is um, which is another thing that is awesome in crypto is that I think before our first live stream, Johnny and I hadn't actually ever even chatted um in the past so yeah it was kind of like a just just survive just make it work make it happen and, and crack on so we may do another one of these i'm not sure yet i'm kind of speaking for the team unofficially which isn't fair but um i've really enjoyed it i think the chaps have as well and, and i hope you guys have too so yeah we can um certainly talk about another one perhaps in the future thanks for having us mindset it was great it was yeah great. thanks for having us mate much appreciated. No, good. No, thanks Thank to you all for, for, for jumping on the quick tweet and putting your hand up to say that you'd speak. So um, I've been doing a bit of a tally here as we go, and there was, um, I think at peak, there was like 150, 200 people listening. So it's just amazing. So, yeah, thanks to everyone who, who has spared your time to listen as well. It's greatly appreciated. All right. Thank you very much, guys. We'll wrap it up. Cheers. This is also recorded, so if, you, if you've missed it or want to jump in um, and re-listen, whatever, um, absolutely go for it. So, yeah, thank you all so much, and we'll chat soon. Bye, man. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, Bye-bye.